going everyone? So it's just me today. <coughs> Got a nice fir tree back here. It's kind of leaning downhill, but I have to stack wedges. I'm going to see if I can't push it up on the road. So There's actually that one and a few more right down here that I've never really noticed. I go flying by here all the time to get up to where I've been cutting and this is actually about three miles down the hill from where I normally cut. So I'm going to snag these trees and there's one right up here above the road. I have enough cable to reach it but yeah I'm going to cut this stuff that's closer plus I don't have to go up that steep grade and risk sliding over the bank. So on this can, I started using the Gatorade tops. Oh, uh, the other jug, I have the a and This one doesn't seem to leak, but the other ones I've done leaked a little bit. So we'll try it out, see how it goes. The only problem with the Gatorade ones is you have to uh, heat them up with either some boiling water or a hair dryer and you can't heat them up too much because they'll shrink pretty fast and then they won't work at all. So, so that last trip that Mackenzie and I done in this truck, <coughs> there was a great big fir tree up the road here, probably had about two cord in it. And it was down over the bank, but it was leaning towards the road and I walked down, looked at it and there was a perfect big fir tree above the road I could have snatch blocked to and I didn't have my snatch block that day. And I told Mackenzie, I was like, we'll get that one next time. And we went up, cut a load, come down and another cutter was just finishing loading his truck off of that tree. I mean, it's all fair game, but they probably seen my boot tracks walk right to that tree because it was tucked in a bunch of other fir trees, green ones. So he probably seen my boot tracks and thought, oh, I'm getting this one. <laughs> it's what it is, you know. It's There's no sense of trying to get mad over it. It's all fair game for us. <clears throat> if you're new to the channel, welcome. And... Uh, we're located in Washington State. The land I cut on, everyone's, or there's quite a few questions that um, people are asking if it's private ground, public ground, it's tribal ground. I'm a Colville tribal member and kind of north, northeast Washington, north central kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a, hard to describe, but anyway, I'm a Colville tribal member. I have access to cut firewood, cut and sell firewood. I do have to purchase resale permits and I also get a free use permit for my own personal use so if any of you are wondering I know I get a comment about every video is it public private what is it so
I'll get this limbed up and hook onto it and see if I can't pull it up on the road a little bit more. So when uh, I was getting ready to start saws, game wardens pulled up, wrote me a ticket. No, I'm just kidding. They're out hunting for a funeral. So that's one cool thing about our game wardens and our tribe. They go out and hunt for funerals when the families don't have hunters and stuff. So anyhow, I'm gonna limb this up, get it pulled up on the road.
Well, I'll get these uh, limbs cleaned off the road and get it pulled up.
bad thing about yard and logs, they get dirty and dull your chain. It's always those pieces that uh, you think, oh, I'll just lightly hit it and it'll pop. Nope. And you go, well, this time it will. Nope. And you start getting frustrated. <laughs> Didn't bring the uh, Husky 550 today. Just brought the big saws. First, I gotta load everything up in my truck each time I go out. Gotta pack it through the backyard, out to the truck, and just pain living in town. When I lived out of town, I could just leave everything in my truck, leave the keys in my truck. So all this wood that I've been cutting in this area is all dead from a fire in 2015. So it's all starting to get a bit of sap rot around the edges, which is a shame. There's a lot of timber going to waste. Um, 
normally I like, to, I mean, this is still good wood. It'll burn, still throw heat. Just got to deal with that sap rot and stuff. But this time of year when folks try and chance it, making it through the winter with just a little bit of wood, then they call them needing wood. It's really hard to get out unless you find a road like this that's plowed. You have to chain up. Sometimes you just can't get out. The snow gets too deep here in North Washington. Um, now this road, I probably could have cut on here the next 10 years or so and uh, had enough wood. But being this was the only road that was opened up, there was probably 15 to 20 other cutters in here just annihilated all of the firewood trees in which I mean that's there's nothing wrong with that it's all fair game and I'm not complaining but it's impressive how much wood guys can haul out of an area with just a pickup truck I mean some of them there's a couple of them wood cutters that do it full time and they cut for a wood program through our tribe that gives uh, folks on a fixed income, I think it's three quarter a year. I need to go fill up my paperwork and start cutting for that program. Um, that way I have steady sales and then I can do my private sales as well. But uh, there's guys on there who cut three to six cord every single day. And them guys really, of course they have two, three other guys working with them. You know, if I uh, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna, well, I may look at buying a newer truck if I get on that wood program and start hauling something I can haul three cord on. Three cord a day is plenty for just one guy. Um, and it's a good, good wage. Um, the only reason I wanna do that is I just wanna make one trip to a person's house then they'll have to sign off on a piece of paper saying that they received the wood. But uh, having to make two trips with the Hulk or one and a half trips with the black truck, you know, is I'd rather just do one trip and be done with one person. So once I start on that cutting for the program, I think I'm going to look at buying a newer truck, something I can haul three cord on. Preferably a uh, diesel. Just thinking about an F550. It's got to be a Ford though. I've been doing a little bit of shopping online and looking at. <laughs> uh f550s with dump boxes i want a dump box too um that'll just be the cat's meow i believe especially after <clears throat> cutting three cord a day and then going to unload three cord oh my goodness that once you're done and your truck's loaded you're like yes and then you get home and you're like oh man i gotta unload all this now or get to your delivery so <laughs> I'm going to do that, go that route, <clears throat> I want one with the dump box. I won't do the loan deal unless I have everything. Dump box. I'll build racks if I need to, but <clears throat> it would be nice if I could get one with a plow. That way I could... Got a couple areas I can plow roads that I won't get into that I guess. <laughs> In case there's locals watching. Don't want them knowing my secrets. Not that it's illegal or anything, but There she 
I know some of you that haven't watched the channel are going to mention get a dump trailer. I don't want to have to tow a trailer up on these mountain roads because a lot of the areas I cut in, it's just a pain. Um, you know, unless I go to a logging site where there's big landings and stuff like that, I could turn a trailer around. And plus, then I got to unhook to pull the log out and then hook back up and it just adds more time so that's why i want to go with the bigger truck with a dump box Well, I'm going to keep splitting. I'll bring you guys back when I throw some on. Well, I got to make this short and sweet. My phone's below 10%. Got loaded. Going to head out and get this delivered. Thank you folks for watching. Wish you good health and happiness as always. And we'll catch you on the next one.